Reports have come out from Shams the Athletic that the Toronto Raptors are interested in trading for Miles Turner. So we'll break down those reports as well as a Raptors analyst getting called out for kind of giving some criticism to Scotty Barnes. He's been called out by NBA players. So we'll discuss that as well as four potential landing spots for Gary Trent Jr. according to the betting odds. So a lot of stuff to dive into. Without, without further ado, let's jump into the first topic of discussion. The first thing we're taking a look at is the Toronto Raptors interest in a Miles Turner trade per Shams of the Athletic. Now, for people who don't know, Shams is one of the deepest insiders in terms of knowing what's going on throughout the NBA. And Like clockwork, as it seems like every single year, this time come December, January, a report has come out that the Toronto Raptors are interested in trading for Miles Turner. And this season seemed like the year that Miles Turner would likely be moved, as the Pacers had very low expectations for their squad coming into the season. But the emergence of Tyrese Halliburton, who they acquired midway through last year, has really raised the floor for this Indiana team. And they have some decent vets that a lot of people, a lot of teams are trying to acquire, uh, especially early on this year or throughout the summer and Buddy Heald and Miles Turner, but the Pacers have sort of been in the middle of the pack of the Eastern Conference right now, and there's questions about what direction they're planning on going. Are they still planning on moving away all their vets, sort of tanking for Victor Webanyama, or do they want to build a nice sort of core around uh, Tyrese Halliburton and try to go in that direction? But Sham sort of gave some insight into that today with an article essentially breaking down what the Pacers' plans are. And I took the excerpt regarding the Toronto Raptors out, I'll read that verbatim, but saying the Pacers are expected to continue to have an open mindset regarding trade the trade market and are not ruling out anything as a part of their direction. The Lakers as well as the Toronto Raptors are among the teams that have shown interest in Turner in recent months, according to league sources. So Shams is describing that the Pacers have an open mind. They might uh, end up moving on from Turner. They might not. And throughout the article, which is outside of that excerpt, he said that there's also potential that they end up extending Miles Turner. So giving him a contract because he does fit what they want to do down there in Indiana pretty well. I know they have Jackson potentially coming off the bench. They have a few guys that could, you know, are younger options that could potentially play center. But You know, we don't know what's going to happen with the Indiana Pacers. And the Toronto Raptors are certainly trying to jump on any type of Miles Turner trade if there's uh, if it could potentially happen and for good reason I mean Miles Turner this season's putting up some really solid stats right 70 points per game eight rebounds 1.5 assists and uh, the two blocks a game it's uh, it's that's that's the very encouraging that's a big thing you're getting with Miles Turner he also shoots 41% from behind the three-point line which would be huge to have at the center position because the Raptors desperately need some shooting and on paper Miles Turner just always looks like the type of guy that would perfectly fit a Raptors team floor spacer defends block shots and can anchor defense that uh those aggressive defensive schemes that Nick Nurse likes to run now the idea of miles turner versus what he actually is as a player usually varies now this season he's taken a drastic step forward in terms of uh growing as a guy especially on the defensive end because he could always block shots but this year he's been a little bit better in terms of just being a bit more mobile not getting cooked every single time you know the rudy gobert-esque stuff at times in the playoffs right turner's that on steroids he gets cooked and pick and rolls at times so you know he's been a little bit better at that according to Pacers fans and obviously will be able to anchor a defense for you which the Toronto Raptors we've seen it especially early in the season when Christian Coloco was really at his you know playing his best basketball he's cooled off as of late but the Raptors defense looks a lot better when we have someone that can actually anchor the defense probably a better example would be Marcus Gasol or even a Sergi Baca when he was here with us right having a center that can block some shots down the paint, allows guys like OG Anobi, Scotty Barnes, Fred Van Vliet, Gary Trent Jr. be even more aggressive out there on the three-point line because they know if they do get blown by, there's a guy down the paint that will protect the rim. Now, it would take some adjustments in terms of Nick Nurse's schemes to integrate Miles Turner into the roster because having uh, him switch out on defenders on the three-point line, while he has improved a little bit marginally in that aspect, it's like Jonas Valanciunas, right? You don't, you're don't you going to play drop coverage with Jonas Valanciunas. You're not going to have him completely switch on to players and try to guard outside the three-point line. So you'd have to adjust your scheme, sort of, but, you know, Having a guy that can anchor the anchor the defense would definitely be a plus. So let me know what you guys would potentially give up for a potential Miles Turner trade in the comment section below. But the next thing we're diving into is a Raptors reporter getting called out for some Scotty Barnes criticism. Now Doug Smith of uh, you know the of the Toronto Star, I believe he uh, he's always dropping some articles, dropping some insight. He's an insider for the Toronto Raptors, and he had some interesting comments recently that got him some heat from NBA players across the league as. He had this to basically say, I'll recap, I have an excerpt from his article, essentially saying that the organized 
There were those in the organization whose eyebrows were raised this summer when uh, Scotty Barnes would uh, would f how he would fit in, or how he would fill filt. I can't throw in my contacts, and I gotta look closely into this. Filt in in and out of the the team runs both in Las Vegas and Los Angeles. So basically, what he's saying there is that Scotty Barnes he wouldn't be fully committed to those off season training sessions we saw down at Rico Hines and stuff. He'd be coming in and out, moving in, using some weird diction to describe it. Doug Smith is, but uh. You know, he's, uh, Scotty Barnes was kind of in, and apparently there were people in the organization that weren't happy that he wasn't fully bought in like a lot of other Raptor stars have been in recent years and improving their game, especially with the team, even though we saw a bunch of workout videos. And he essentially goes on to say, essentially, essentially that, that other stars in Toronto Raptors history, whether it be DeMar DeRozan, Fred Van Vliet, Pascal Siak, and Kyle Lowry, they'd always go away for summer and come back with something added to their game. And Barnes did not do that last year, and he better do it this summer if uh and he should be doing as much as he can in season two if he wants to have those star expectations so that's a, essentially a summary of what doug smith said that's the full context but he's catching some heat from not just raptors fans not just fans of the nba a lot of people are roasting how uh, he worded basically with the frustrations of raptors uh front office members but Kyle Kuzma came out, and essentially there was a summary of this from NBA Central, and Kuz responded saying the NBA has a real problem with patience, and that's something I've been sort of echoing on these podcasts right now. Obviously, we have to criticize him, and especially in game reactions, right? When he's having poor games, you can't just say, oh, it's all rainbows and sunshine, but I have been saying... I haven't lost a single bit of faith in the potential of Scotty Barnes as a player. I still think he can be that star, that focal point, that franchise cornerstone in future seasons. And while, yes, we all had high expectations for him coming this year, and yes, he has regressed in some areas, I still think Scotty Barnes is uh, on a tremendous trajectory for growth. For a rookie that we took last year that was supposed to be a raw prospect that overperformed in his rookie season when in Rookie of the Year, and, you know, he's in a little bit of a sophomore slump. And even that said, he's still having a really, really good season. Like, stat-wise, Scotty Barnes has been great. 14 points per game, you know, taking out of context last year. 14 points per game, 7 rebounds, 5 assists. Uh, you know, a couple turnovers a night, decent defensive stats. 31% of the three-point line is not great, but 44% from the field. Obviously, not, not numbers that are going to blow you away, but I'm sure if on draft night last, last summer, or the two summers ago, and we told you that that this is, these are the numbers that our fourth overall pick would be averaging in his second season. We'd all be happy, and it would be all we'd all be hyped. But unfortunately, you no, know, the expectations were a lot higher, and maybe not unfortunately. And they're still super, super uh, high going forward for Scotty Barnes, and they're a little bit down right now, especially with the rookie season he had. But I'm still on the hot Scotty Barnes uh, hype wagon, so that's a positive. And there's also some advanced stats that are showing Scotty Barnes has also improved in terms of playmaking and. All these sorts of things. So his overall playmaking talent has uh, gone up tremendously, according to Basketball Index, who have all their own custom stats over there. And so he has improved in that area. So it's not all downhill for Scotty Barnes in a second season. But the next thing we're taking a look at, the next thing we're discussing in this video, is four potential Gary Trent Jr. trade destinations named. Now, when it comes to uh, you know trade rumors and stuff, there's always a sports bookies Vegas predicting the spots that they could potentially go and. Uh, you know, we've made it known in this podcast ever since Kawhi Leonard, uh, we we kind of wrote off the Kawhi Leonard trade rumors and Vegas was saying they were the number one spot, right? We said, okay, these 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 dudes do have the insiders, the uh, inside scoops and reports have come out that essentially the Wizards, the Bulls, the Warriors, and the Lakers are considered the most likely landing spots for Gary Trent Jr. According to, according to the odds. So the Wizards at number one, which is pretty... Uh, Pretty interesting, all things considered, because they're a team that I feel like if they're going to make a trade, you'd think it would be in the direction of uh, sort of tearing it down. But rumors, reports did come out that the front office is trying to build around Bradley Beal. So, you know, they just uh, they just offered one of their young prospects in Rui Hachimura to the Phoenix Suns in a potential Jay Crowder trade. And the Suns ended up declining that one. So, you know, they're going to have to offer a whole bigger package if they want to acquire Gary Trent Jr., even with his contract coming up, because Gary is a guy that has some pretty solid numbers, right? 17 points, he's young, two rebounds, 1.4 assists. You know, the three-point percentage is steadily climbing up. He's at 33.5% now, 43% from the field, but he's a certified bucket getter. He's shown he can play defense. So, uh, 
you know, those are the teams that potentially Gary Trent Jr. could land on. The Bulls will be an interesting fit. Maybe that's uh, all the DeMar DeRozan hype train. The Lakers have all, always been interested in acquiring Gary Trent Jr. So uh, let me know where you guys think Gary Trent Jr. could potentially get traded to because I've locked it in. I've booked it. I've uh, made my predictions. I finally got one to... Well, I made long-term predictions. I'm going to start making some closer-term predictions. But uh, I had the prediction that a trade will be made come the trade deadline. And all of the all of the insiders, and we broke this down in the last video, have said that Gary Trent Jr. is the most likely candidate to be traded on the Toronto Raptors. So this prediction is going to come true. I think, uh, I think it's you know going to be Gary that likely will be dealt. And do I want it to happen? Not for nothing. I don't want us to sort of give up on him for no reason. But I... Do think if a package is sort of be sent out, Gary could be that guy. Just contract situations, value you could get in return. He's still a young player, but let me know if you guys agree with that prediction. And if you guys do want to make predictions, if you guys do want to, you know, speculate, get on some futures, definitely sign up for the Cool Bet app because they are going to have custom odds for all of these trades as we inch closer to trade deadline, which players will be moved, and they'll be custom. So if you guys sign up and use our link down below and let myself or Goody know, right, we'll add you to our Discord, and you can make custom, custom lines for uh, for what cool bet can go, come out. And they'll put the odds for it, and you can bet on it. So that's the exciting stuff. And uh, the final chapter in this video is a big moment for the Toronto Raptors because we just played the New York Knicks in the garden. Pascal Siakam at 52 points. It was a remarkable performance, snapping our six-game losing streak. And tonight, we have an even bigger test from the Cleveland Cavaliers, who are the upper echelon of the East right now. And the odds are looking pretty good for the Toronto Raptors to, to come in here. We're still not uh, not favorited or anything like that, but you know you can make uh, you can make some bread. You can make some bread if you uh, are hoping, if you're predicting the Toronto Raptors uh, to get a W in this one right there, plus plus 162 so you can over double your money you can get that rocking so you know bet on the toronto raptors i mean i locked it in coming into the last game that the raptors would beat the new york knicks i'm not a, i'm not booking it i'm not booking a guaranteed win they gotta i felt good about that one i'm still feeling good about this game here tonight but i think if the toronto raptors can get this this game you know, if they can beat the Cleveland Cavaliers, a nice little streak of wins. I'm predicting that, but we need to win this one first. But if you're feeling solid about the Toronto Raptors getting a W, you want some good odds, definitely uh, check out the Cool Bet app. They're, uh, you know, the best sportsbook in Canada. They're regulated across Canada, and, you know, you get the best lines and custom futures if you use our link. So definitely sign up below, shoot myself or Goody a message, and we'll add you to our Discord chat. But, you know, lots of Toronto Raptors news. You guys are the best to make it this far. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You guys are the best. I'm signing out. Cheers.